Hey guys, it's Shay from Skull Gaming Network. Welcome to another Retro Bowl video, and today I am going to go through all of the positions available in Retro Bowl and rank them from least important to most important, in my opinion. In the process, I'll go through what each position does, basically for anyone who doesn't understand football very well. And I will talk about, for each position, what stats I consider the most important and which stats I consider to be less important. So jumping right into things, we've got nine positions available. To me, the least important position is your kicker. With the kicker, why do I consider him the least important? Well, it's simply this. The only thing a kicker will do is kick field goals or extra points worth one or three points. Now, three-point field goals at the end of the half from long distance can be valuable, which is why if you have a kicker, the most important set is going to be kick range. Second most important will be kick accuracy, getting the kick to actually go through the uprights once you have the distance, then stamina so that you can kick those long field goals accurately and strongly later on in the game without getting fatigued, and then I haven't seen any use for speed in a kicker. But Two-point conversions are pretty easy in Retro Bowl at the time of this recording. I'm recording this the same day it's being uploaded, February 24th, 2020. If the game nerfs and offense becomes more difficult, field goals might become really important, but until that happens, kickers just are not that valuable, especially when you can make up for one field goal with three two-point conversions, and my conversion rate on two-point conversions personally it is well over 80%. I'm not even very good at them. Then in eighth place, I'm going to go with the offensive line, or an offensive lineman. What does the offensive lineman do? Well, at least what he's supposed to do is block for when you're passing and for when you're running to give you more time to pass and to give you more better routes to run the football. Having seen a bunch of different comments on previous videos of mine and having browsed the Retro Bowl subreddit on Reddit, it seems like no one really knows what the offensive lineman actually does compared to a base one, which to me means the offensive line isn't really making an impact at this point in the game. I've heard a couple of people say, oh yeah, they get better running holes with a good offensive lineman. It's very possible, which is why I'm ranking the offensive line slightly ahead of the kicker, because it could allow you more time to get bigger and better plays. I just haven't seen enough of an effect from them to rank them ahead of eighth on the list of most important positions. Then at number seven, I'm going to go with the tight end. The tight end is kind of a hybrid of an offensive lineman, from the standpoint that a tight end at least should be able to do some blocking, and a wide receiver who catches the ball. The tight end you can throw to, I like to use the tight end in goal line situations, and I actually do use the tight end quite a bit for how low I'm ranking a tight end on this list. The reason I'm ranking tight end so low is that I haven't noticed the difference between like a one and a half or two star tight end and a four-star or higher tight end in terms of performance in-game in those key goal line situations. Now, if you're trying to throw passes downfield to your tight end, then certainly speed will matter. But the downfield routes to the tight ends, to me, are never a primary or even secondary read. If you do want to use a tight end, having a higher catching rating is going to make drops less likely. Those drops can be a pain if your tight end drops it and the result is an interception. After that, having good strength. So if your tight end catches the ball right at the goal line, they can stiff arm, break one tackle, get in. Speed will help jump a tackle here and there. And then again, if you want to target your tight end downfield, having good speed will be important. And then I would say stamina is least important for tight ends because in my experience, the tight end should not be utilized so much that the tight end is getting significantly fatigued, nor should the tight end be your number one go-to late in-game target where they'll need to have 100% of their stamina available. 
Then in the number four through six spots, I'm going to go with the defense in general. I have not noticed having a magical combination of defenders making a difference, but what I will say is it is important to have some good defenders on your team. I'll go through each position, go through what stats I consider important for each defensive spot. The defensive line, that's right at the line of scrimmage. We'll try to beat the offensive line to stuff run plays for short gains and to try to sack quarterbacks for losses of yardage. With the defensive line, what you think about is number one, tackling the running back. Number two, having good strength to break through blocks with the offensive line. With the offensive line, I didn't really go over it, but I'd consider strength and stamina the most important for the offensive line because it's going to be a battle of strength. Who wins that battle and gets through the line one way or the other? Then I would consider stamina important. You're battling throughout the game. Those late in game battles in crunch time will matter. And then finally, speed. Speed does have some importance once you win a battle to get to the quarterback or running back more quickly, but I haven't seen any instances where any downfield plays that are threatening are having players get chased down by defensive linemen. That's normally your defensive backs or your linebackers where speed's a little more important. Speaking of linebackers, with linebackers, linebackers in football, their number one job is to tackle. And then, you know, having some speed to do some coverage is good. Having good stamina is important so they can hold up late in the game. And strength can matter as well to me with linebackers. It's really tough to differentiate between one and four. So I'd look for, honestly, a balanced linebacker, kind of like what you're seeing on the screen right now. Or they maybe don't excel at any one thing, but they do a lot of things very well. And then with your defensive backs, they're covering wide receivers. So they're going to need to be fast to hold up against wide receivers that should also be fast. They'll want to have good stamina so they can maintain their speed throughout the game. Then they'll want to be able to tackle wide receivers. And I would say strength is least important. You might have some strong wide receivers, but I feel like most wide receivers are kind of speed catching guys. So having the speed to catch up to them the stamina to maintain that speed and being able to tackle the receivers so they don't bust out bigger gains if they burn you are important. Where you can't control the defense at this point, there's no way they're in the top three because the three positions remaining, which are quarterback, running back, and wide receiver, all make such a big impact on the game, and you can use or control those players. At number three, I've gone back and forth between the top three positions. I could go one, two, three with any order depending on the day. I'm going to go with the running back because the running game, it's possible to be a successful runner, especially if you're good with strafing your running back. I've seen the footage. I know it's possible. I'm not denying it's not possible. I'm not denying the running back might not have more value. I personally actually really like using the running back for checkdowns. That being said, if your running back gets hurt, then you're stuck with a backup that's kind of a bot. If you use a bot running back, you can still get at least five yards on a little dump off. That might not be the 15 to 20 you can get with a good running back, but even a bot running back will be there to bail you out if you truly need them. With the running back, most important is speed. Being able to break through and once you break out of tackles, run fast and get extra yards. That's massively important. Number two is strength. Being able to break those tackles with a stiff arm. With speed, you can jump out of tackles, which is why that's still number one. Either way, you can break tackles, and that's most important for the running back besides your own personal ability to strafe. Number three to me would be stamina. Again, being able to maintain that good speed throughout the course of a play and throughout the course of a game will make that running back a more viable weapon. And then finally, catching. It's nice to have a running back who can catch the ball and make some good plays. But I find that I've had running backs with terrible catching drop roughly the same amount that running backs with halfway decent catching, like the Scott Mostert card. The drop rate doesn't seem to really change, so why invest in a stat that doesn't seem to make an on-field difference? Then at number two, I'm going to say wide receiver. 
wide receivers are important because if you're trying to drive the ball downfield, which I said the kicker's least important, that's because your ability to drive the ball downfield with a good wide receiver and then, of course, a good quarterback will more than make up for it. Having a good wide receiver is one half of that equation. You're going to want a receiver with max speed. You're going to want a receiver with max or close to max catching. With receivers, it does seem to make some difference. And then after that, you want really high stamina on your wide receivers. So once they catch it and they're beyond the defense, they can run a lot further before the defense eventually catches them and tackles them by the ankles. Finally, would be strength. Being able to break a tackle here and there using your player's strength can be valuable, but not as important as being able to burn guys with your speed, then catch the ball, and have the stamina to outrun them for a while. And then finally at number one is the quarterback position. Having a good quarterback is the difference between completing passes and torching defenses deep, or throwing wounded ducks that fall incomplete, misaiming and accidentally throwing a pick, and not being able to beat the defense deep and having to work a short game downfield where you have more plays and more chances that whether it's your own mental mistake or one of your players dropping a pass into the arms of a defender, that you're just not going to get as many points on the scoreboard. With a quarterback, to me, most important, arm strength. Being able to, again, beat the defenders deep. Second most important is the throw accuracy. So those deep balls, if you're aiming them riskily, they won't fall into the arms of a waiting defender. They'll fall incomplete just out of the arms of the receiver, if not in the receiver's hands. Number three is stamina. I've noticed that lower stamina quarterbacks throughout the course of the game are not able to throw a ball as far downfield and might not throw the ball as accurately. So the more stamina they have, the better their throws will be throughout the course of the game, especially in the third and fourth quarters when it comes to crunch time. And then finally is speed, because you can run with your quarterback, And look, if you have an attack where you can run crazy with your quarterback, then speed might be number one, stamina might be number two. I have yet to see anyone unlock a quarterback's true Michael Vick full potential. The best running success I've heard of with quarterbacks is three to five yards of play with some really good strafing skills. So that's why I put speed with the quarterback at number four. So to recap the position rankings, number nine, kicker number eight offensive line number seven tight end number six through four in no particular order are the defensive line linebackers and defensive backs at number three is the running back at number two is the wide receiver and at number one is your quarterback i hope you guys enjoyed this video if you did be sure to leave a like if you're new around here subscribe for more retro bowl content i'm going to do a franchise series starting March 1st. I'm going to upload that every single day. Let me know in the comments your thoughts of my position rankings for this video, along with, if you've watched this far, what team should I use in that franchise rebuild build-up series. With that being said, that's going to do it for this video, guys. I'm G from Skull Game and Network. Thanks, everybody, for watching. And until next time, and as always, peace out.